Hey everybody, it's Mike G, Hot 97.5 and 1039. I'm here with our special guest today, Bryn Elliott. Hi. Give it up for Bryn, everybody. Oh, oh. It's too much. It's too much. She's Thank so you. excited to be here. I'm more excited to have you because... Dude, you're... I don't know, man. I think I'm more excited to be here. <laughs> Well, I'm so excited because uh, you have this incredible story of how you made it as a musician um, to this point. And it starts with a dream to go to Harvard. Yeah. And you realize that dream. Can you take me back to the beginning? Why Harvard? I I loved books. Mm-hmm. I took an English class my freshman year of high school and was obsessed. Started writing songs about the characters in the books. And I realized I should probably go somewhere where that's socially acceptable. (laughs) And I figured all the nerds are at Harvard, right? So I'll go to Harvard. And college was so unfamiliar to me. Neither of my parents went. And so saying Harvard was just kind of like, that's college, right? And uh, and I Googled what a college application was. And and my life just became this resume. And and uh, but I started writing a lot of songs at the same time. So school and music are really intertwined for me. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, and then you, from what I understand, the story is that uh, you applied and you didn't get in yep. right away. But then your next application, you added the music part of your life music, to yeah, it. Yeah, I added all the music that I wrote. And that, and and that helped you get over the uh, over the hump? Uh, well, you never know with these things, yeah. but I... I I think I knew more of who I was when I applied the second time. I had more conviction about my music and and what I wanted to do even in college. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So they could see the whole Bryn Elliott picture I think so. I think that's what happened, yeah. That's that's super cool. (laughs) So what is it like being a student at Harvard? I mean, you know, we all all think it's got to be like (laughs) 20-hour days studying. I mean... How you know? How intense is it? Is it intense? It's pretty. Think? It's intense. Yeah. yeah, there were lots of lots of blood, sweat, and tears. It was an intense time, but it. I almost. I think I thrive under pressure, mm-hmm. and so I. A lot of songs came in that moment of just like feeling everything and going through everything, and and I think for anyone, regardless of where you go, like college is hard. It's just like an interesting time in your life. You're in this like bubble. And, and you're trying to figure it out. And so I think, you know, there's a lot of emotions at work there. And so it's a really like great place to write songs actually. So. Do you just sit in like in the comments and just watch people and sort of yeah. like observe? And oh, I notes? love people watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. And college is, is an interesting place to do that. <laughs> so yeah, it was, yeah, it's great. Okay, cool. And so uh, your music, you started way before you went to Harvard. You were writing songs yeah. at 14, 16? 16. Okay, yeah, 16 I started playing old. when I was 14 and then songwriting sort of developed from there did your parents help you get into music or yeah you know um my grandparents were around a lot when i was growing up and they would be in the kitchen cooking dinner or whatever and they had these voices and they would sing to each other like when they were cooking dinner and i remember just being a little kid and being like what is happening and so i always was intrigued with singing and the voice and um and then my dad had an old guitar in the corner out of our house that he, he like sometimes played he kind of fiddled around with it And uh, I asked him if I could play it one day just because I was in the middle of applying to college and I was so overwhelmed and I felt like my life was a resume and I wanted to feel human again. So I just like, I just need to learn something new. And um, so I picked up the guitar and went on YouTube and tried to learn how to play chords and all that good stuff. So And you're self-taught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, like I was say, like saying this earlier, like guys, like people on YouTube. I would Google like a Colby Calais song that I would want to play, and I would see like, oh, there's an A minor chord. Don't know how to play that. (laughs) Like YouTube, how to play A minor chord on acoustic guitar, and then there are these lovely people who have made like a two and a half minute tutorial on how to do it so they those guys taught me guitar so i'm You're gonna have to grateful to them, them you yeah i, to I will i yeah i like i'm thanking them for the rest of my life that's awesome yeah um, and so a, a little bit of uh, what i've uh, learned about you too is that you when you were at harvard wrote songs in the bathroom on the bathroom oh, yeah, floor yeah, yeah yeah and uh Who i don't know. man okay. it's that's it's what it is. Do you watch um, Carpool Karaoke with James Corden at all? Do you I ever love, see that show? Okay. I love that. Okay. I live for that. The Adele one is like yeah. everything to me. The Adele yeah. one is incredible. So good. The most recent one, and this is what kind of got me thinking about this, was uh, uh, Paul McCartney. <gasps> so he went to his childhood what? home, 
And did you, you didn't see this one? I haven't seen it. I'm okay. going to watch it right after this. Okay. <laughs> so he went to his childhood home and then showed James where he recorded his music no. and it was in the bathroom. Yeah. Because wow. the acoustics were so good in there. The acoustics are so good. I Anywhere you go, there's always a bathroom. Yep. I knew it. That's I knew it. really cool. And I was Whoa. like, she, she probably had <laughs> oh better things to do than hang out in the bathroom all day, but the sound was probably the what you're looking for. The sound is where it was at in college. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a little insight. You can make your own YouTube tutorial. Just yeah. record in the bathroom. Yeah, that's great. the secret. <laughs> Yeah, um, totally. So uh, there's uh, the the new EP comes out, Time of Our Lives, yes. at the end of this year. Yes. Do you have a release date yet? September 7th. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, so look yeah, for that, guys. Soon. Yeah. And Time of Our Lives is is a song that you wrote mm -hmm. uh, pretty much encompassing your time at Harvard. Is that yeah. kind of a, a, yeah. a, a I true statement? Yeah, I wrote it. Yeah, I wrote it last summer, and I, I was kind of getting all these texts from my roommates, and they were like, oh my goodness, we only have one more year together. Like, what are we going to do? And it's just so emotional. And and all this stuff, and we were all freaking out. We were kind of terrified of the future and of, of, of what would happen, because neither none of us really knew like what we were, where we would be or whatever. And I was on the phone with my mom one day, and she was like, Brynn, just like, don't be afraid of it. Just like, have the time of your life. And when she said that, it's just like, I was like, dang, you're right. And, um, and so I just wrote that song just as an encouragement to myself and to my friends to really be present with each other and just take in every moment and not worry about the future. And um, I'm quickly learning that that's applicable to all phases of life, <laughs> not just college. So, so yeah, that's what the song's about. I released it on graduation day too. Uh, was that was my fun. next question. Yeah. Did they use it? Did Harvard use it as like the graduation song? The <laughs> no, official I didn't one? tell them about it. So oh. I just released it on my socials and stuff. But I had this was crazy. This is I started like ugly crying when this happened. I had some friends who are kind of like mutual friends, like people I don't really know, but they had heard it just from the internet and they came up to me and they were like I'll always think of graduation day when I hear the song and I was just like oh my gosh that's the <laughs> nicest thing anyone has ever said so yeah it was just a really special thing for, for me to do to be able to give that to my friends and what a moment that's awesome yeah. and we need another graduation song we can't listen to that oh, Green Day one man, anymore oh man the Green Day one's it's, good what about the Vitamin C one? Oh yeah yeah it's, man we can't. love her we've oh. been going on 30 years with that one now so <laughs> I think we're gonna that's adopt good. yours as the new one how about that thank you alright <laughs> that's All right. cool I'm cool. Uh, I'm cool with that. Uh, sounds good. Well, uh, Bryn, Elliot, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much. I have one more yeah. task for you because okay. as a DJ who talks about personalities on yeah. the air all the time, you're a philosophy major. Yes. So I think we can maybe uh, use it, utilize your skills to okay. give some insight to some folks that uh, maybe uh -oh. need some evaluation. Some evaluation. Oh, shoot. All right. So first up. <laughs> We have Taylor Swift, everybody. T Swift. So she's got uh, some relationship problems from time to time. Well, we all do. Exactly. Well, yeah. You've kind of been in a similar situation from what I've heard, too. You had a relationship in Harvard that, you know, maybe you were touring too much or there was some things yeah, of time man. away. Yeah, man. Well, I wasn't touring too much, but the person I was with felt like I was. Okay. So, okay. so, uh, <laughs> so is there anything, you, any advice you can give for Taylor from your situation and maybe your philosophy background. Oh, what she man. Should do. Well, I think uh, she should just be Taylor Swift, which I think she's doing a really wonderful... I don't need to give, <laughs> I don't need to give Taylor Swift any advice. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Because <laughs> she's enough. killing it. But yeah, I think just... I mean, the song that I wrote about that guy is called Might Not Like Me. Mm -hmm. and, and I... Yeah, it's a song about this guy and, and that moment when I decided I wasn't going to live in fear of what he thought about me anymore and I was going to just do my music and be myself and um, it, it was also inspired by a class that I took at Harvard of these women in the 1600s England um, who were writing philosophy and women in the 1600s England didn't do that kind of thing back then they'd had no access to education apart from like two women who were like I don't really care I'm going to write this and I'm going to write it under my own female name and uh, and I was inspired by those women to just kind of write this song, and the guy and I broke up, and it's the best day of my life. So. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And you, it was inspiring to write a song. Yeah, and it sounds and like she. Yeah, I mean, like she's the queen of she's that. She's been doing that for years. She's been too. doing that for years. So it's therapeutic. All right. Yeah. Well, totally. Taylor, keep doing what you're doing. I got one more for you, Brandon. Cool. All right. So this guy. I don't know if you can see. Is oh, he upside oh. down? Yeah. Justin Bieber, everybody. Beeps. Justin Bieber. That's Is there any cool. helping him? Philosophically, dude, he's getting married. Is, is, is it too early for him? I, I mean, I think he's he's getting his life. I mean, he's like 
getting married. That's yeah. like the most philosophical thing I think you could so ever do. So you think a woman can keep him in check then in a marriage that, you know, well, he, that's probably the best therapy dude, for him? I, well, I just think like the decision, this is crazy. And my parents got, got married really, really young, actually 18 and 19 years old. And and they have a crazy story, but it's just like the the act of like, I'm going to to live with you the rest of my, like you're my person. Mm -hmm. That's the most philosophical thing you could ever do, so. He's he's gonna he's on the road to. He's recovery. fine, man. All yeah, right. he's he's killing it. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, well, everybody, give it up for Brent Elliott one more time. Thank you. Incredible story, incredible Thank person. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in, and, and best of luck. We're gonna hear Thank some you of your so music much. too, which we, I can't wait for. Everybody here is so excited. They're like, just stop the interview. Let's go. Let's hear her sing. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Well, thank you for having me. This All is right. a blast. Thanks again.